Kevin Clay here, and we're going to talk about lighting in this video. And uh, first of all, you know how I like to do these, starting out with the least expensive and going, uh, working our way up. Least expensive lighting, the sun. It's available for free in most, most parts of the world from 8 to 14 hours a day. And uh, it's, it's, uh, that's, the, that's the highlight of it. That's the beauty. The sun is free. Uh, problem is it can be tricky. If a very bright day, you think a bright sunny day would be perfect to shoot on, it ain't necessarily so. Problem with that is you can get some very bright backgrounds. In fact, I'm going to show you some footage right now. Sometimes you, you, you have no choice and you have to work with this. But uh, some that I shot, I was under a pavilion, so we had the shade, but the background is so light, uh, you just have to make compromises to, to keep. Either you end up with a super bright background and uh, and faces that are okay, or you have to sort of compromise like this and put them where it's somewhere in the center. So now, okay, back to uh, back to my back deck here. Well, right now the sun's okay; it's behind a tree. Now, problem with trees, of course, you can sometimes get those little spots of light. Might see some starting to come through right now. Um, another alternative is to find a shady spot. I've got an umbrella that I shoot under back here. One of those little deck tables with a sunbrella up on top of it, and that's a good way to shoot. Another problem, though, with outdoors, though, well, it's good and bad concerning sound. Uh, sound wise usually outdoors is good because you don't have to worry about echo. Bad thing is, is if your neighbors are doing some construction, they're building a deck or a big car goes by or an airplane flies over, uh, you're going to have to deal with that. But overall, if you can find a, a nice, quiet, shady spot outside or a good overcast day, uh, then your outdoor light is a pretty good option for you. If you're doing this commercially and having to shoot, let me tell you, some of the worst are car lots. Uh, a sunny day, terrible time to shoot. You got all that shiny metal and you got that bright parking lot. You know, try to go early in the morning before the sun gets too bright and too harsh or, or do an evening shot. If you can avoid shooting in just that direct bright sunlight at all, that's a good idea. Now let's talk about, okay, this is the cheapest lighting, right? Okay, we covered the sun. Now let's talk about uh, a little step up here. I've got my buddy Mark Fonville. He's my go-to guy when it comes to lighting. This guy is, uh, well, he won't let me call him an expert, but he knows a lot about it. And uh, so we're going to talk to him about some different types of lighting, the cost you can expect, and uh, how to get the most usage and the best results out of that lighting. He's waiting down in my studio right now, so let's hop down there. Okay, so now we've come down into the super secret studio. Got some nice controlled lighting here. Uh, thanks to my buddy Mark Fonville. Out of control. And uh, we'll talk about uh, some of the different types of lighting. First of all, we'll, usually I start with the, the least expensive, but I'm going to start with the high dollar stuff first. Uh, the pros use tungsten, those really bright lights, and you might see those. What are your thoughts on that? Tungsten is good. It's a little warm. Uh, it, uh, it literally warm uh, as far as temperature goes. Uh, and, yeah. And uh, you may heat up a room if you're in a small space. Uh, but, and it's a little bit more difficult to control. Yeah, this is what you saw a lot of the old TV guys using. But you'll still see them, and boy, that stuff does get hot. I know at the yeah. end of the shoot, they had to literally wait for the fixtures to uh, cool down. So personally, uh, I would say, nah, forget that. Uh, the the other is a, that's really cool that I see now, this LED lighting. You see yeah. these panels got like 500 little bulbs. If you are going to get that, because there's some cheap ones you can get, like you'll see one for 30 or 50 bucks you can put on your camera. What are your thoughts about that? Yeah, I think mean, those are really coming into uh, fashion now, and uh, cheap lights, good light, and it's very controllable, so uh, very durable too. Okay, and, and now for a studio setting, like with the amount of light we're putting out right now uh, to use the LEDs, you're going to need, well, I think the best deal I've seen on them uh, on Amazon.com is, is about $500 for two of these panels that would put out the kind of light yep. you need for studio. So you're looking at $500 yep. for that. Now we'll talk about what we're using right now. And this is um, it's just fluorescent lights that uh, in these big kits, and we'll show you some pictures here of what we've got there. Uh, you see the big canopies so the, the light is it doesn't come back on your camera. Uh, you can get a couple of these lights and a green screen uh, that we use uh, to put these cool backgrounds behind us. Uh, you can get that, I've seen that for about $180. Basically under $200 you can get some nice lights. Now the thing about that that uh, you need to keep in mind is don't make the mistake I made. I'm thinking well fluorescent lights, fluorescent light. I got those umbrella lights. You know you see those yep. kits. Mm -hmm. You got the umbrellas and you got the bulb there. Uh, for video, for what I'm doing, it just didn't put out enough light. So I spent, you know, 150 bucks or so on that, and it turns out it was not what I needed. So once again, that's what I'm trying to do with this series is to make sure that you don't make the same mistakes I made, and you know, just not spending a bunch of money on the wrong thing. If I can keep, help keep you from doing that, uh, then that helps you justify whatever it was that you paid for this, or uh, whatever you had to bribe your buddy to to borrow a copy uh, of this series with. So try to get some. You don't have to spend a lot of money, but spend enough and do your research. Make sure you get the right thing. And these fluorescents I like. Now the, the disadvantage of these is they're not terribly portable. 
whereas the LEDs are small and you can move them around. Yeah. Uh, these things are kind of big and you got the bulbs and you, you can take them out and pack them and all that. that that's, that's just kind of a pain. But for a setup in the studio, this is nice. Now, when I set them up, I was having a few problems with actually looking decent. So that's why I had to call my buddy Mark here and ask, so some lighting tips for setting up lights. First of all, how many, how many of these type lights do you need? Well, for a, a simple setup like this where you're doing uh, interview type work, uh, it, it kind of goes off the, uh, the basic foundational lighting uh, system, which is uh, a main light or a key light, and then you've got uh, a fill light, and then you've got some type of a backlight. Uh, and those can come in various quantities, various forms. Your main light, your key light, is going to be your strongest light. And unless you're doing a very flat light situation like what we're doing here, uh, you're not getting a lot of shadow on one side then you're not going to get a lot of drama either. It's a very uh, kind of a sterile flat light right. situation and especially with the green screen I think you're going to put a beach behind us. Oh here we can do okay like beach up at the beach thank you <laughs> got it. Surfing. Okay <laughs> and uh, so you want the light to be very even and very clean um, but that's the basic scenario is uh, a, a, a main light a key light and then a fill light, which is going to soften those shadows, and then some type of a backlight. Backlight could also be like uh, the little kick that you're seeing off of, off of Kevin's uh, side cheek over there, or this, uh, let me see which side is me. Uh, <laughs> this right here is uh, from a backlight, and it's kind of kicking off this top of my head there, um, which is very comfortable. So, yes, on the beach, it's, it's a good look. And those can be uh, adjusted, but that ratio is what you want. You want the main light, fill light, backlight ratio can be adjusted in many different ways. So basically, three lights is what we're talking about. Mm -hmm. A couple of good sides. You can see uh, with my setup here, I'm showing you now. Uh, I've got you know two just, just big lights, uh, kind of a, a different setup. And I can make actually one of these. I think I've got a few more lights on than the other to get kind of a little little variety to the thing. You didn't know that, did you? I did not kind know of that. advanced there. I think I've got three bulbs in one, and I've got uh, five in the other. And my backlight here, oh, now this is a high dollar thing. I'm gonna show you my big secret here. The light on a stick. Uh, you see there, and uh, hey, this are, is... Uh, are we at the fair? Yeah, I know. <laughs> Everything on a stick. Uh, you see, we've got the pole there, and then the light at the top. That's the thing I picked up from, from Lowe's. Uh, it's the hardware store. You stick a bulb in it. We've got a fluorescent, one fluorescent bulb. You don't need, you know, we talk about needing a lot of light for your front, but from the back, just something that'll put it out. Also, uh, you can experiment with different bulbs. I For different colored lights, different kinds of lights. I've got some different bulbs here that I screw for that backlight to, if I want a little bit of a, a warmer light, a, kind of a yellowish or more of a daylight thing. So uh, never be afraid to just experiment and have some fun with this. But it, it's always better to experiment if you've already got a good foundation so not everything has to be trial and error like it was for me initially. That's what I'm trying to help you avoid. And thanks to people like Mark Fonville, you can avoid it. Okay, now one thing before we wrap up uh, this little bit here, uh, and this is something uh, Mr. Fonville told me about. Now, I've got this light, I had my back lights and all. You pointed out something that I had wrong, I, uh, and that was uh, having to do with the, the light coming into the camera. Even oh, though yeah. I'm not, you know, you, you may be looking through your camera and you don't see maybe that backlight that's back there, but you say that can still, you can still have problems from that. Yeah, in fact, uh, uh, any kind of uh, specular light that comes directly from, a, from the source, even the sun outside or, or your light bulbs, if it is actually uh, creating a line uh, of sight uh, directly at the lens, you're going to get lens flare inside your lens, is uh, the elements of your lens, and it's going to bounce around in there and create a dis diffusion. Uh, a dis That's where you get those those funny little patterns, basically. Yes. Yeah, you were looking for a technical term. We'll say funny little patterns. <laughs> it's going to degrade the quality of your image. And that. And so, uh, so you want to try to avoid that. And and one way to avoid that is what you've done here, which is you've uh, added a scrim in front with your light banks, your soft boxes. Uh, they have a, a scrim that the light shoots through. Well, that diffuses the light and it causes it to uh, shoot around in, in micro ways. Uh, nano, I think is the word. Ah, nano. Uh, before it gets to the lens and so it never actually uh, uh, attacks your lens. Uh, but you want to try to avoid that. Uh, Okay. And the other thing you pointed out to me, I have also have a light behind me that uh, helps to, to light the green screen, and I'll show you that now. Uh, basically, I just took some black poster board and cut it and put it over that to, to keep, and once again, that's just a cheap 
fixture from the hardware store. Um, but I've got this uh, light, uh, this uh, poster board over, or dark poster board, to keep that light from shining right into my camera lens. So you don't, once you don't have to spend a lot of money. In fact, you've pointed out you can even make like little blinders just for the camera itself. If, if you don't have a shroud on your camera that's blocking the light out, you can make them out of cardboard. Yeah, controlling the light is really uh, something that you can get creative with. Uh, there are a lot of things that you can buy. And uh, I think in uh, Kevin Clay Creative here, where they spare no expense, <laughs> you I can think tell. <laughs> uh, we'll be seeing some of that. But uh, you can also uh, get creative and control light uh, with things that you find around your house. I, I use only the best black poster <laughs> board. Thank you. Anyway, Mark, thank you for your help on this. And uh, your website is? MarkFonville.com. Okay. And I'm sure you've been seeing that on the screen. But, uh, yeah, you can go there. And uh, I don't know if you've got any tips, but you do have some cool photographs and things people can look and see yeah. what you do, so yeah. check him out. Thanks. And uh, we'll get on to our next video now in our series.